So we've created and presented a print form for document purchases using the print wizard. Let's see what we have. Everything starts with a command. In brief, a command is a configuration object used by developers to describe actions that users can perform. There are common commands that are not assigned to specific objects or run uh, actions on objects that do not support standard commands. The first thing to note is that all the work takes place in the commands module. The command itself has two input parameters, command parameter and command execute parameters. As you can see, command parameter can be either a single value or an array of values the command receives from a source, uh, that is the place or object where the command should run. Note that we need to define the parameter type in the command properties. Properties of the command also contain many settings necessary for the command to operate correctly. You can explore this functionality yourself. It should be easy with a fairly complete description of these options given as hints at the window bottom. We choose the group to put our command to, the parameter type, the way we want to pass the parameter, single or as part of an array, and define whether this command changes the data of the form we attach the command to, and so on and so forth. With this description, it does become clear that the key role of commands is to offer added functionality within forms such commands are attached to. And here we turn to the comments that automatically get added on, creating a command. Here we put the code that our command should run. We use a structure to add the parameters we want to pass to the form when one gets open. We make a direct call for the form that receives the command with all these additional parameters. And this is what we need to know at this stage. Feel free to dig into Syntax Assistant to learn more about this method. But for now, we don't need all this functionality. Let's just say a few words about the second parameter, command execute parameters. As you can see, commands get parameters from the source form so that we can modify them if required and pass them back when the form is called. Commands can also exist within individual configuration objects. They perform operations related to this particular object. Command print for document purchases is precisely the case. As already mentioned, commands can be parameterized, or in other words, they can use values passed by the platform in their algorithm. We define the value type and the properties of the command, and such a parameterized command becomes available in forms that have attributes of the type identical to the command parameter. Now, this is all regarding commands. You might think that you're getting much uh, information that at first glance seems unnecessary, but the course aims to draw your interest to the platform and encourage you to experiment with it. Any developer is an external explorer. There is no better way to explore a new development environment than to learn it yourself. With all that you have learned, let us go back to our command print. Here is what we know from this. Our command has been placed in group command bar dot important in the form that uses the command, uh, in our case, document purchases document form, that is here. Our command accepts a parameter of type reference to document purchases. Also, the parameter can include several values, an array. Now let's go directly to our command module. As you remember, we create a command. The platform automatically creates client procedure command processing. The procedure's role is to process all actions carried out by a command. 
Now what happens under the hood? Well, this is where the fun begins. We create a spreadsheet document and pass it to server procedure print along with a reference to the current document. As you remember, we have parameter, command parameter for this. Server procedure print calls the big and complex procedure print contained in the manager module of our document purchases. Within this procedure, our spreadsheet document gets populated with data. We'll talk about that in more detail in the next part. But for now, let's go back to the command module. So what is a spreadsheet document? Well, a spreadsheet document is a common object in the 1C Enterprise language. We use it to create output documents, primary documents and reports. In fact, a spreadsheet document is a powerful interactive tool for presenting information and can be used both on its own and as part of any of the forms used in an application. In its essence, a spreadsheet document is similar to a spreadsheet. It consists of rows and columns with data. Still, its capabilities are much broader. During our training, we've already dealt with spreadsheet documents. For example, when creating a report with result processing, we could choose to display the results in the form of a spreadsheet document. As this functionality is out of the scope of our course, we have to skip it for now, but I urge you to try creating a query and displaying the output in a spreadsheet document. One more case when we dealt with spreadsheet documents was the list of available templates. We can create a spreadsheet document for a single configuration object or create a common template. As you can see, this is indeed a spreadsheet that is waiting to be populated with data. We also came across a similar table when working with the DCS. But in that case, all the data was already filled in automatically. While here, we have to do everything manually. Finally, we have populated our spreadsheet document with data and returned to the command module, where we see the following parameters. It's nothing but the settings from the previous part. We also get an option to display document titles and an option to make the grid in documents visible. Now, as a final step, the platform calls method show parentheses for our spreadsheet document, thus displaying it to a user.